Welcome to Pillar Talk. I think that he wants us as a father to think big and yeah. dream big. The Lord gave us these five pillars. Our weapon is his word. He loadeth us daily. Welcome to Pillar Talk. My name is Pastor C. Terrell Wheat. I'm the lead here for the NSSV Prayer Ministry at New Life Covenant Church Southeast. And today we are going to talk about the pillar of prayer. Before we get into this, I have a special guest. I'm going to allow her to introduce herself. Hello, my name is Megan Rice, and I serve on the board of directors here at New Life Covenant Southeast, and I'm also over curriculum and training and development with the intercessory prayer team. Yes, yeah, so Megan, as we know, our pastor has declared 2022 to be the year of the unexpected. Absolutely. And, and so I want to dig into talking about what it looks like to pray for the unexpected. As you know, you serve on the prayer ministry. One of the five pillars of our church is prayer. We have worship, we have word, we have community development, we have outreach and prayer. And so tonight I wanna to talk about like, how do we pray for the unexpected? So give me, give me your thoughts. Any, any, any thoughts come to mind when you think about what it means to pray for the unexpected. No, I love that. I think, when I think of praying for the unexpected, I think of God as a father and how much he loves our faith. And so I think that he wants us as a father to think big and yeah. to dream big and to not be afraid to trust him for good things, even in the middle of craziness, like what we're experiencing right now yeah. in our country, in the world. Yeah. Um, and so I just think that being able to dream with God yeah. and to hope against hope like Abraham, yeah. like he did, right? Yeah. It said, you know, in faith, Abraham hoped against hope and it was counted to him as righteousness. Yeah, that is, that is so good. We talking about Abraham and how he left his father's house and he went into the unexpected. Mm -hmm. He went to a place and he said, God, you have to show me where I'm going. And I believe that prayer and praying for the unexpected is like that. Actually, without a level of being in this place where we're like, God, you can do it the way that you desire, I don't think we can receive the fullness of what God desires um, to do for us. And what I, what I mean by that is, oftentimes when we pray, talking about praying for the unexpected. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes when we pray, we want God to do it a certain way. And if we are locked into God, you have to do it this way. Right. We could actually miss the answer when he sends it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes God can come another way. I remember years ago, um, struggling in my finances, and I heard a sermon, I was in church, actually this was youth ministry, so this was a lot, a long time ago, many years ago. And the pastor said, as you give, and you believe God to give it back to you, don't just believe God to give it back in money. Don't just believe God to give it back, you know, by somebody walking up to give you a blessing. He said that God may even bless you with the unexpected idea. Hmm, I love that. So you sow a seed, you pray over that seed, and now here comes an unexpected idea that's going to bring you resources that could literally go from generation to generation. Praying for the unexpected is so powerful and it's something that I believe as believers that we really have to lean into. Let me ask you this, when you first heard pastor say, 2022 is the year of the unexpected. What, what other thoughts kind of went through your mind? Sure, I think for me, thinking about the unexpected, um, something to like lean into. Mm. Um, something I've been learning about or studying is Jacob. And thinking about Jacob, I'm like, his family was dysfunctional. He wasn't a really honest person. Mm -hmm. um, all of those things and 
he, when he was running from his family, running from Esau, he ends up in Bethel and the Lord gives him a dream. And that in spite of all that crazy stuff he did, Jacob was like, wow, I had this dream. And if God does all the things he said, he promised, like if I get to where I'm supposed to go safely, I'm gonna make him my God. Mm -hmm. And then when we fast forward to him actually wrestling with God before he gets back home, back to the promised land, I'm like, that's unexpected that God wants us to actually wrestle with him, that there's a space where God wants us to actually face the things that we're dealing with on the inside, to actually face um, hurts that we may have had or issues with family and actually dig in and lean in and work through that thing. To me, that's unexpected. We think that we'll get healing right away or that things will turn around right away. But like Jacob's family, the dysfunction didn't happen overnight. Yes and being willing to wrestle with it yes. and wrestle with God and know that you will be victorious, but God wants to work some things through us. So those are the things I thought about where I'm like, Lord, what are you saying in 2022 that's unexpected? Yeah. And, and the wrestle and the value of wrestling, you know, and, and being able to really own it. Like it wasn't just handed to you, had to fight for it. So for me, that's what came to mind. Like, what does it look like to lean in with God yeah. and to really wrestle for the unexpected. Yeah, and I think as you talk about wrestling for the unexpected, it's such a mental thing because many of us are such control freaks to the point where we tell God when to do it, mm -hmm. how to do it, and where to send it. Right. But God wants room to give us the unexpected. And mm -hmm. I think everyone as we pray, we should be praying like, okay, God, this is what we're asking you for. But my expectation is however you want to do it. I am open. I am free for you to do the unexpected. And, and we know we've talked about prayer. We've been training in prayer and we teach our intercessors that prayer starts in the mouth of God. Mm -hmm. So as God speaks, right, we, we listen and then we respond to God. You know, if we only listen to God in prayer and, and let God instruct us, he is going to instruct us to do some unexpected things. I, the story that comes to mind is when um, the disciples who were fishermen, many mm -hmm. of them, um, they were out to sea and they were fishing. They, they went and they couldn't catch anything. Right. And Jesus told them, listen, cast your nets to the other side. And when they listen to those instructions, mm -hmm. which is basically Jesus, God talking to them, they responded in obedience. They caught an unexpected harvest, so much so that they could not even bring it in. And I believe today that if we would just stretch our faith and pray for the unexpected, listen to God and do what he says, there is an unexpected harvest that's going to hit our house, going to hit our dreams, going to hit everything that God has for us. I am so excited about the year of the unexpected and really praying to God, saying, God, I'm open to however you want to bless me. Um, any thoughts? Any? No, I think that's so good. Um, the other piece about the unexpected is that knowing that God might have things for us that, again, we weren't expecting. So like this year, I had a baby. Yes. I wasn't expecting that in the middle of a pandemic. Yes. That was the last thing I was expecting. <laughs> and knowing that even though that was something that was shocking and surprising, what a blessing it's been. Yeah. So even knowing that unexpected things um, on the front end might come as a shock where you're like, is, is this a blessing? What does this look like? What kind of work will it take um, of mind, of heart, of resources? Yeah. But then to be able to come on the other side of it and to have this beautiful little boy. Mm -hmm. And not just the little boy, but there's been so much healing in me mm -hmm. after having him in my body. I'm yeah. healthier now than I was before I had him. Yes. You know, so just recognizing that even things that might be struggles, things that might be difficulties, God can use that and flip that thing, and that can be an unexpected blessing as well. Yeah, and it, it reminds me of something. In Jeremiah 33 and three, the Bible says, if you call upon me, I will answer you, 
and show you great and mighty things that you don't know. You don't know. Sometimes just being in the presence of God, calling on Him, loving on Him, mm -hmm. it opens the door, opens the heavens to the point where God begins to, as He said, pour out things, pour out blessings. Right. Show us things. Again, Jeremiah 33 and 3. Listen, those who are watching, you need to be sharing this, commenting, and saying, listen, you know what? I'm going to call upon God and he's going to answer me and show me great and mighty things that I don't know. Mm -hmm. Great and mighty things, that's unexpected. He said great and mighty things that you know not. And I, I, I'm, again, I'm encouraging everyone to start praying. <laughs> it sounds funny, but just unexpected. Like God, like I'm open to however you want to bless me. And pastor preached about this. He talked about how sometimes we believe that God is going to use certain people to be the source right. of resource. Mm -hmm. But when we pray to God and we're open, and sometimes when we do that, when we, when we say, God, it has to be this person or it has to be this way, we box God in. We right. handcuff God. We blind ourselves and we miss what it is that God wants to do. And I, again, I'm, I'm just excited about the year of unexpected and seeing what God does as a result of a church that's praying, believing God, but, but we're still open to the unexpected. Right, and I love what you said, that space of not wanting to box him in and not wanting to miss him. Don't wanna miss him. Don't wanna miss him. You don't wanna miss God, you know, and He's such a gentleman, God. He doesn't force himself on us. That's not who he is. He gives us free will. But what does it look like to partner with God and say, Lord, I don't want to miss you. I want to be open to you. I want to find you and I want to know you. I want to love you more. And the nice thing about the kingdom is that when you're hungry, you read more word yes. and then it increases hunger. Yes. Right? So yes. it's kind of backwards yes. where it's like, I, I eat more and then I'm hungry more, right? Mm -hmm, yes. I'm hungrier for God. And so this year, I encourage you to pray more and it'll increase that desire to pray, to read more and it'll increase your desire to wanna read, but to seek after God. It's like the more you seek Him, the more you find Him. And the more you find Him, the more you get to be unexpected by His love, by His mercy, by His kindness. Um, I think it just makes you more sensitive and aware that, that He's here that he's an omnipresent God, that he's present with us. And that's such a big deal to yeah. know that you're not walking day to day haphazardly. Yeah. You know, but that you can look for him and you can find him. My husband calls him God winks. Yes. He's like, that's a God wink. Yes. He just showed up for me. Yes. And I love what you said there because if we can respond to God mm -hmm. in ways that we typically would not respond, it's almost like this is an unexpected response. Have you ever been in church I remember a time I was in service and the worship was so high, I felt like I need to give God more praise mm. and something said, just run around the church. <laughs> and I said, I am not <laughs> right. about to run around this big old church. Mm -hmm. And I just couldn't contain myself and I said, well, let me give God a praise by running around and, and that was unexpected. Yeah. So when we move in an unexpected way. We respond to God in ways that sometimes are counter to how, you know, we want to be cool, counter to how sure. we want to look. Um, David danced before the Lord with mm -hmm. all of his might. That was unexpected for a king yeah. to do that. When we release unexpected praise, worship, stuff that's not comfortable, God will come in and respond mm -hmm. to our response and an unexpected, this is the year of the unexpected. Again, if anything I really want you like to, to be thinking about and to get, it's like pray now, but be open to the unexpected. The Bible says this, and we quote this scripture all the time. God can do exceedingly. And, and abundantly. Yes, above all that we ask or even or think. Even think. Mm -hmm. That means whatever we can think about, God can do so much right. more. 
He can do the unexpected. And, and, and again, as we pray and pray as a pillar of this church, we pray all the time. We have foyer in prayer. We mm -hmm. have midweek prayer. The prayer ministry prays. 12 we hour have prayer. 12 hour prayer, sunrise service, worship. Mm -hmm. That's that's prayer. We we pray all the time. And, and, and now as we pray, I think it's important in this year of the unexpected to say, okay, God, show us something that we have never seen. Do something unexpected. Even those that are watching today, you should pray right now. Say, God, do something for me that's unexpected. Unexpected in my finances. Unexpected in my health. Unexpected in my family. Unexpected in my career. Unexpected. Do I know what I'm asking you to do, and I, I believe that you'll do those things, but I know you can do something totally different, a whole, a, another, a whole other way. Like, do something, God, <laughs> that's unexpected. All right, so I'm going to give you a moment here to think. You said that having a baby, you didn't really expect that. Is there anything else you could think of that has happened over your life or recently that God, like, literally, like, blew your mind? Yeah, so when you said that, I was thinking about college. So 100 years ago, <laughs> um, I was, in, you know, I'm incredibly dramatic. <laughs> and in college, I remember I was, I, was, I was struggling with depression. I was struggling. And I was like, Lord, if you don't hold my hand today, I'm just going to die. Mm. I just, I can't take it. And so I was walking on the yard and I felt somebody hold my right mm. hand. And I, I raised my fist. Mm. And I turned around because I'm like, who's touching me? Yes. And then I stopped in the middle of the yard and I was like, I prayed that crazy prayer that the Lord would hold my hand. Yes. And that if he didn't do it, I was just going to fall out in the middle of campus and just die. Yes. And he did. And that was so unexpected. Like I prayed for something. I don't even think I knew what I was praying. Yes. But I think that God delights in walking with us just like Adam and Eve in the cool of the day, I'm like, he's not a far off God. Mm. And then another thing I can think of is um, in third grade, I lost the ability to walk. I was in ICU and the doctors are like, she's got a 50-50 chance. She probably won't make it. I had 12 specialists meet every day, leukemia, mono, lupus, all these diagnoses. And my mom had taught me about Jesus and I was so excited to go to heaven. So I couldn't wait to die, which sounds really crazy, but I was super excited. And I remember telling my mama, I was like, mama, I'm so excited. I get to be home with Jesus. And she just cried. And I'm like, what's wrong? I thought, I thought that was a good thing. And it was one of the first times I remember the Lord speaking to me as like an eight year old. And he said, Megan, that's selfish. Your mama and your daddy need you. And I just remember praying a little prayer. And I said, Lord, if it's okay with you, I'd like not to die so that my mom and daddy won't be sad. And it was unexpected. I wasn't supposed to be able to have kids because of the chemo I was on but I have two babies. Mm -hmm. I wasn't supposed to be able to walk again without pain because I had arthritis through my whole body. You wouldn't know it today. I had to wear diapers and people had to change me. You wouldn't know that. So unexpected, the way that the Lord healed me and moved. And here I am like 20, 30 years later, and it's a completely different thing. <laughs> that's unexpected. Yeah, that is. That's God. Yeah, that's so powerful, Megan. Unexpected closeness. Mm -hmm. like uh, uh, unexpected level of relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, when we get into relationship with God, we think, okay, this is cool, but there's another level of closeness mm -hmm. that is available to all of, I love that Megan, like closeness to God brought so much healing, mm -hmm. so much deliverance. Right. And you are a walking miracle mm -hmm. and it's unexpected because like you said, the doctors did not even expect for you to live. This, this is so powerful. I wonder those who are watching today, if, if you're like, man, type in the chat if God has done anything for you that has been like unexpected. I remember growing up and you've heard this story before growing up and not having my dad around. Mm -hmm. 
And so for years, I desired the approval of man. Right. And for some reason, no matter how hard I tried, no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't get it. I felt like no one would approve me, no one would accept me, no one would validate me. Mm -hmm. And I remember going to God in prayer, frustrated, upset, like, man, God, why am I being rejected? You know, my earthly father doesn't love me. I'm in ministry, nobody. And I heard God say in this close place, I approve you. Mm. I love you. Mm -hmm. You are my son. And then he said something that was unexpected. He started to talk to me about like the baseball games when I was young. He said, I never missed a baseball game. I never missed a football game. He reminded me of a fight I had. He said, when you had that fight in third grade, I was there. Mm. Like he told me that he was close and it came in prayer. Like if you get to a place and you pray and it doesn't have to be an elaborate prayer or you don't have to cross all the T's or dot all the I's, just talk to your father and say, God, here we are together. I love you. Do this for me. The unexpected will happen. I had unexpected validation. Do you know since that day where God told me I was approved, I have never looked for the mm. approval of man. That's good. Because my Father in heaven approves of me. Doors begin to open mm -hmm. unexpectedly. Things begin to happen. Uh, blessings begin to come. Because I leaned into a place where I began to understand that as a child of God, yeah. God will do the unexpected for you. That's good. <laughs> And it's true. <laughs> it's so true. It is so true. So I pray that like Megan and I, you are so excited to be in this year of the unexpected. Some of you probably are already praying, saying, God, just do it for me. Like, you know what? Speak to me. Let me hear your voice. Do something unexpected. Heal me. Heal my body. Heal my, heal my child. Validate whatever mm. it is. Just take a moment. We're about to end this, but just take a moment and pray to God and say, Lord, in 2022, I am open for the unexpected. Yes, God. God, I'm open for the unexpected. Say, God, do this for me. I trust you. I love you. I want to be close to you. I want relationship with you mm -hmm. unexpected like never before. For some of you, you've been with God a long time and you think that, okay, we got this. Do you know there's a deeper level? There's more like God, like give me more, do whatever you desire in this year of the unexpected. Okay, I'm gonna give you, let's give you the final thoughts, final words, and then we'll close this. No, this is so good. Um, I was thinking of one more unexpected thing that happened. Yes. Where I'm like, oh my goodness. So again, college, right? The depression phase. And in high school, I had this thing where all the time I would say, I'll never be fully loved. I'll never be fully known. Mm. Um, I'll, be live, I'll, I'll be doomed to live a life where I give um, and I pour out, but nobody will ever know me or see me. And I would say that thing every day mm. for months. And in college, I remember sitting in my dorm room in the dark and I could hear this whisper, I love you, I love you. And I got scared because you know, you like watch weird movies and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm hearing voices. But then I realized that it was the Lord and I just started crying. Mm. And I'm like, why are you saying that? Mm. You don't have to love me. And again, it was so unexpected because I didn't love myself. Yes. But he just kept saying it and something just kept breaking every time he would whisper, So I just encourage people that as you are leaning in, it's okay for God to step into the, the places that are hurting and the places that are dark and dirty, the places you don't want people to see. Know that He loves you. Know that He's willing to walk with you. It might not be a perfect walk this year in the unexpected, but He's not seeking perfection. He's seeking you. You were the joy that was set before Him when He was on the cross. He wants you, and that love might feel unexpected, but just know that you're so deserving of it.
Thank you so much for watching Pillar Talk. Listen, we have one more episode. Come back next week and join us as we continue Pillar Talk prayer.